Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to talk about the derivative of sine and cosine. So these are two important derivatives you want to add to your list of rules uh, so that you can do many, many more types of derivatives. The first one talks about the der derivative of sine, and this one's a really nice one. It is simply cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And so you can already start to get a sense that, you know, these derivatives are really nice and easy and that they're actually connected to one another. In fact, let's see how well connected they are. If you start with, say, sine, and then you go ahead and you take its derivative, like I said before on the previous slide, you get cosine. And then if you take the derivative of cosine, this will bring you to negative sine. This isn't quite originally where we started, but we're not that far away. Now we could take the derivative of negative sine, and this is like taking the derivative of sine, it's just going to have a negative sine out front, so it brings us to negative cosine. And now we can take one more derivative and finally be back to where we started, back at sine. So the derivatives for sine and cosine are related to one another, and they essentially just keep looping around in circles, uh, which allows you to do much higher derivatives of, say, sine or cosine very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and get in, into a few examples and just try out using these two new derivative rules. For this first one, we want to figure out what is the derivative of 3 over x plus 5 sine of x. And if it helps, you might want to look at this first one as 3x to the negative 1. All right, so let's go ahead and find our derivative. So the derivative of this guy, I'd bring down the power, negative 3, and then reduce the power by 1, the negative 2. Now I need to figure out what is the derivative of 5 sine of x. Well, the 5 is a constant, so it's going to be unaffected since it's just multiplying by our sine. And then we'll go ahead and say, okay, what is the derivative of sine? Oh yeah, that's our new rule. It is cosine. So the derivative of this entire function is negative 3x to the negative 2 plus 5 times cosine of x, and you're done. Uh, let's try another one, just because it is kind of quick. That way we can get in some more practice. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the derivative of this guy. We're going to look at uh, 9 cosine of x plus 3x to the 4th. So now I need to figure out what is the derivative of cosine, it's negative sine, and go ahead and write your negative sine all the way out in front. So the derivative of cosine, negative sine. Now we'd take the derivative of this piece, just like we would before, plus 12x to the third, and now this one's done. All right, let's go ahead and see how these two new rules actually play very well with all of our other rules. Uh, specifically, I'm going to use the product rule on this guy. So I'm looking at a function. This is 6x squared multiplied by cosine of x. So it's really like I have two functions and they are being multiplied together. So I'm going to call them u and v. So I'll multiply these using my product rule. So I'll look at my first function, the derivative of the second. Second function, derivative of the first. All right, so f prime of x. Well, my first function is 6x squared. And the derivative of the second function is negative sine. Okay, that looks good. Plus, now my second function, cosine of x, multiplied by the derivative of the first function, 12x. Okay, and just to clean this up a little bit, we would probably move our negative signs all the way out front. So negative 6x squared sine of x, and maybe write our other function out front so no one thinks it's in the argument. So plus 12x cosine of x, and now that one's done. Now the really neat part about uh, just knowing the derivative for sine and cosine is you can actually build the derivatives for many other types of trigonometric functions without ever knowing their rules as well. We're going to find the derivative for tangent. And the reason why we're going to be able to do this is because we can simply take tangent and write it into sine and cosine. So let's start there. 
tangent is the same as sine of x all over cosine of x. So if I want to figure out the derivative of tangent, then I can simply look at the derivative of this. Now you'll notice that this is involving two functions being divided, so I can take care of this using my quotient rule, where I'll call the top function u and the bottom function v. So the quotient rule is low d high minus high d low all over low squared. We'll use that to take care of all of our pieces. All right, let's give it a try. So f prime of x. We'll start off with our lower function, cosine of x, multiplied by the derivative of our top function. So the derivative of sine is cosine. Minus, now we have our top function. So there's sine of x, multiplied by the derivative of the bottom. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine all over the bottom function squared. Okay, so that looks like a pretty complicated derivative, but fortunately a lot of things will simplify with this one. So here I have two cosines being multiplied together. Let's call those cosine squared. Here I have a negative sine and a negative sine being multiplied, so positive sine squared all over a cosine squared of x. Now look at that, sitting right on top is our Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared, all of this will equal one. So this will reduce to one all over cosine squared of x. And we can rewrite this one as well and call it secant squared of x. So how cool is that? We started with our tangent function and we were able to find its derivative, secant squared, just by knowing the derivative of sine and cosine. So try to remember uh, those two rules as much as possible. They'll really help you out with lots of uh, trigonometric derivatives and you'll be just okay. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.